Um, it's Rob again from This Drink of Life. Um, today I'm lucky enough to talk with Rod from uh, Rod J Beer Ventures. Um, we're going to talk about beer, vlogging, blogging, the bar scene, the usual stuff, etc., 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 and anything else we can think of in the next 15, 20 minutes or so. So, um, welcome, Rod. Thanks for joining me today. Um, um, I know there's a bit of a time difference, so I hope that wasn't too much a problem for you. Um, no, not so, at all. Thanks for having me. So I, I guess the first thing then, the name, it's always interesting to know the name of a, a, a vlog. Like, I, Obviously, Rod is your name, but mm. why, why did you come up with Beer Ventures? Well, it's, uh, you know, when you go, you look online and you start setting up a blog or a YouTube channel or whatever it may be, there's tons of people already out there with ideas. So every time you think it's a new idea, rarely is it ever a new idea because someone already got the name out there. And, you know, I started, uh, well, I've drank beer for a long time and I started thinking, well, you know, I just go with beer ventures because it's kind of like adventures and beer kind of put both words together and kind of had a nice little ring to it. And people were able to understand it pretty easily and just adapted it from there. Right. Okay. Well, for me, it's just this drink in life, so it's quite simple. You know? <laughs> my, my, Sometimes my the, life simple, of, the simplest things are the best things. <laughs> my life of drinking so far. Um, and how long have you been doing it, Rod? Uh, I launched the YouTube channel, I want to say March of 2015. And at the same time, I messed around with the blog off and on before that but then i officially stuck with the blog as of about that time as well and then launched the facebook page and twitter and all that kind of stuff so i kind of rolled out different facets of the marketing from that point so march 2015 was really probably the start of everything okay it seems you were around longer than that you, you're quite prof um you put out a lot of, a lot of videos i think yeah well when i was uh, initially doing it i was trying to do a video a day um, obviously it gets tough because I usually shoot the video and then I'll edit it down for the time frame I want but you don't have time life gets in the way as you know sometimes that you don't can't stay up on it right now my current backlog of videos I have 25 different beer reviews I haven't uploaded even yet so <laughs> things got kind of in the way there but I was trying in, in the beginning it was like okay I went to work I came home I drank a beer I recorded I uploaded and just other things will fall behind. So it, it does look like I have a lot out there, but I have slowed down a little bit since then. And then started doing some other stuff outside of just the beer reviews and trying to change up the channel. But um, yeah, it's a, uh, it's an active thing. It's a thing where you plan it out. You know, I try to work like a social media calendar or a board to plan stuff ahead of time, but it doesn't always work. But when it does, you get a lot of stuff happening for sure. And what, 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 what made you want to do a blog? Our vlog. What, what what gave you the push to do it? Um, actually, I didn't at first. Um, it started with the YouTube channel, and it was my wife that actually suggested I do a YouTube channel because she watches YouTube all the time, and she said you should do a YouTube about all the beer and stuff you drink. And my response was, why would anybody want to watch anybody drink beer? Because from my perspective, if I watch somebody drink beer, then I want a beer. And if I don't have a beer, why would I want to watch anybody else? And she's like, no, you know all this stuff about beer and people be interested. So I started out doing that. And then my background is in journalism. So I already knew a lot of the journalism rules of writing and all that kind of stuff. So I started taking some of the video stuff and then writing some pieces and moving it over to like a blog as well. So then I have both of those things going and then Knowing my marketing background, social media was something I easily adapted to as it became more available. So I was able to get a lot of stuff through Twitter and Instagram and um, Facebook. But really, it all started because she kind of nudged me into kind of doing it as a hobby. And now she's asking why I'm doing it so much. I'm like, well, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, you know, as much as I. She's like, well, you go too far. You should have just done it a little bit. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I like to have fun with it. Well, it sounds like you have a great, great wife that she's yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's she's she, she's supportive of it for the most part, but you know, um, wives want their quality time too, so it can be a little too much sometimes. She used to get upset when I play video games too much. Now she gets upset if I drink too much beer. So <laughs> the opposite, opposite to my wife, she she, she just has no idea what's what's this about. She's no interest either. So <laughs> opposite. Um. So what about the feedback then? 
what's the feedback you've been getting from your blog? Uh, the feedback has been pretty positive overall. Um, the different segments have different followers, I guess you can say. I mean, Twitter has been pretty, pretty solid. I think I have 2,400 followers there now on Twitter. Um, Instagram, I started to pick up more speed. It's like 1,200 there, I think. Uh, Facebook uh, has done a little bit more. I actually moderate for a couple of the, uh, groups here in Cincinnati. I'm over in Cincinnati, Ohio. So um, I do some stuff there, and that's actually helped on the outreach, and I'm part of other beer groups. But a lot of people seem to like it. I get good responses usually on the comments when I do the beer reviews. Um, you know, part of it is back when I was younger, I used to also bartend, so I know how to pour a good beer, things like that. And I, some of the guys talk about it, sometimes they get criticized on how they pour their beer in a glass, and I don't really have those type of things. So I know how to actually pour the beer. And I think that helps for a lot of people that follow my channel, I think, and why I, I get a lot of positive feedback is I also study beer. So I read a lot about beer. I'm always involved. I'm checking out other articles, other channels, other things I can catch on beer, and I share that information. So I think that's what a lot of people like. So they find somewhat of an educational part of it as well. And then we try to do stuff to make it fun too. So yeah, well, you, um, you're fairly upbeat and um, friendly and fun as well. I think that's it. That's part of it. Um, do you ever get recognized on the street? Does anybody say, "Hey, you're the guy in that beer blog"? <laughs> <laughs> I've only had it happen like one time. I was at one of our beer festivals a couple years ago, pouring beer. I usually volunteer. We do two big ones a year here in Cincinnati. And uh, one of the women and her husband came up and she's like, I know who you are. And I was like, you know who I am? And she's like, you got the YouTube channel. I see you do beers all the time. I watch it like here and there. And I was like, oh, really? I had no idea. So that was kind of a, a surprise there. Um, but yeah, it doesn't happen as much. I, I, <laughs> it's still it's still growing. I think on the YouTube channel, it's only about 419 subscribers. Although I do get some good amount of views. I think it's still a building process, but you know, I'm not as big as like some of the other guys. Like you look at someone like Simon on real Out craft fails where he's doing stuff and they make beers after him and everything like that. And, but yeah, it's a growing process and I'm actually, I'm happy now I'm getting more recognized with more of the local breweries. So I made a lot of good contacts here and we have over 60 breweries in our area. So a lot of those guys recognize and know me now and I made some good contacts in the industry. So that's been kind of a cool thing. They keep me on their media list. So I get a lot of media updates so I can publish that stuff and help them out. So, you know, I'm getting recognized where I want to get recognized. So that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> I know, when we're talking about social media, what what platform do you do you like using the best? And well, what's your opinion of each platform? Like, um... Probably the best one for me that I like the most is probably Twitter, just because Twitter is something where it's kind of a bullet point format. And the majority of people, from my perspective, have grown in ADHD. So they need stuff really quick and in a bullet type format to keep their attention. Mm -hmm. And so you don't really dilly dally when you're doing the um, information. You can put it right out there and people can click on it or see it pretty quickly. But from a, now if you look at it from a graphical perspective, I think Instagram is a nice spot to go because people like to go there and see the visual pictures you're actually sharing and they might read a little bit more there too. So, I like using both of those. Facebook is almost so crowded on Facebook. It's like kind of a hit and miss type thing, I think, nowadays. Um, when I look at some of the analytics on my channel, I get a lot of stuff coming back from, like, uh, StumbleUpon. I use I use that to put stuff out there in the marketplace. And then uh, Reddit, I'll use that once in a while, and that'll draw some interest from some of the people, too. And then for some reason, Google Plus seems to not be as strong. I get some stuff there, but it's kind of like – I don't think a lot of people out there in the marketplace are really using Google Plus as much with all the other stuff. So, yeah, yeah, I guess so. I I really don't know. I mean, I I think you're right. Twitter is probably the one I would use most myself. Yeah. Um. Um. So, what, have you any good advice then for running a decent blog? What What have you learned? What What good tips do you have for for someone who's just starting the vlogging? Myself, have you any good tips for me? <laughs> well, I know how long you've been. I know you've been blogging for a bit of time out there with the uh, uh, your blog. And the one thing I would say, from what I've learned on mine, you have to stay consistent and you have to consistently do it. Um, I've done the blog for a while, and on the blog, I don't see comments all the time. You know, you put pieces out there, you wonder sometimes if people are actually reading it. 
And some people will quit way before they need to. I would say you have to stay consistent and keep doing it. If you can get a schedule and try to blog towards a schedule, people become familiar with it, just like a TV show. And then they'll start to know what times to tune in. If you're doing a YouTube channel, you try to put in videos around the same time so people are accustomed to it. There's some great apps out there for, say, say YouTube. There's an app called TubeBuddy. And it'll actually look at your videos and it'll tell you the best time you should be posting. And that's been helpful to show where your traffic is coming from. A lot of people, when they start doing YouTube or they do a blog or some of these other things, they're not using their analytics. So if you take your sites, I would recommend setting them up in Google Analytics. And that'll show you where your sources are coming from, what people are looking at. And that'll help you position better where you want to be at for your stuff. So those have been helpful things that have helped me there. And of course, the big thing is to know your audience and talk with them. You know, social media is an interactive aspect. So I see some people that have YouTube channels and people will comment, they never reply to their comments. It's like, you have to be interactive. Mm -hmm. And you know, you talk with the people, you find out what people like. For instance, one of the latest videos I just did, one of the guys responded asking if I have done the Samuel Adams 76, and I haven't done that one yet. But he said, I'd be interested to see my views on that one. So I told him, well, I'll try to pick one up this weekend and take a look at it. And then I can just upload that. That's something that people want to see and know about. So you have to be able to communicate and interact there. And that's going to be the big thing, you know, find out what your people want and provide it to them. <laughs> yeah, that's good advice. I don't even know what I want, really. <laughs> <Never mind. laughs> well, I get some people that ask me on some stuff and I was like, they say, well, I don't know what I want to do with this channel or do here. And I said, what well, did you ask your viewers what they like? You know, make a video say, hey, what do you want to see on my channel? What do you like on the channel? You know, I do on my stuff. I do like the uh, beer reviews and I'll do like the, I started a new segment called Quickie Beer News where I do like a two minute update on something. And I'll do something like the Beer Flow show where we have me and three other guys will do uh, talk about a brewery on Thursday nights and go through some beers they have. And I do these things, but I'll, I'll ask people, you know, what else do you want to see? Because a few weeks ago, I was like, there's so many people doing beer reviews now. Do I want to keep doing beer reviews? Maybe I just want to do the news segment and the beer flow, leave it at that. And I ask people, people say, no, but I like watching your reviews. I want you to still do reviews. So yeah. you have to feel out at certain points, you know, maybe once every two, three months, whatever, you put a video out there. Hey, how's everything going? What else do you want to see on the channel? Are there things you're not liking? What things do you really like? And you ask people and they'll respond back to you. Okay. Okay. That's great advice. Um, so um, you, you're kind of a very bubbly character. and um, <laughs> you, you, There's too much pain in the world to not like. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you seem like a friendly guy and a good sport. I mean, what, are you are you like that in, the, in real life, in the bar, like the local bar, or are you totally different? <laughs> yeah, I mean, everybody kind of sees me as kind of the uh, – the fun guy. So yeah, I guess I have that persona and I learned a long time ago. There's just a lot of stuff that people get disgruntled or upset about. It's not worth it. It's just not. So a lot of times, you know, I'll tell people I laugh so that, you know, I don't cry or get aggravated because there's just some stuff you just can't control. So why get all, you know, upset about, about it and bothered by it and life's too short to not enjoy it. So, you know, you, we choose our own, options of how we handle things and stuff so now there's times where i will get upset it's like that don't get me wrong but it's kind of like you know it's not worth it for most of the things you know 90 percent of the things that happen you don't have to get all bent out of shape about okay um you, you might think this is a strange question but like i'm from ireland like and there's, there's not many black people that live <laughs> in ireland <laughs> i've heard that i've heard that <laughs> no. so is is there many black people blogging about bear or is that there's a there's there's some I mean, it's kind of a over here in the states, you have different pockets of stuff. There's a lot of groups that that I'm part of that are a lot of uh, black craft beer drinkers. Um, you have some that do blogs, just like you have a few that do breweries and stuff too. Um, in the past, I think the thing has really been is kind of that that lack of diversification in it. So it was always like a lack of opportunity that. It was mostly ran even by just totally like probably 90% plus of all white males. So you didn't have a lot of women involved in it either. And you're starting to see that change now. And you're starting to see more of that happen with some of the breweries. And it's kind of like the, the, 
the idea of not seeing people in there from the other backgrounds is more not having that access or maybe that knowledge really about it. So just because you don't see it maybe as much, it is happening, but it's just not happening on that bigger type scale. But when you look at stuff in the numbers, you are seeing the increase of other people being involved from, you know, black, Latino. You look at like, for instance, um, Asian, like over in Japan, they're exploding with craft beers over there. Um, and over here, you have a lot of Asian pockets where they have a lot of different breweries. Um, Korea, they have a lot of different stuff happening too. So it's, uh, it's just one of those things. It's just, it's growing and it's going from, you know, kind of being where it was, you know, 90% or so plus say Caucasian. Now it's growing into the other areas and it just takes time. But yeah, we, do, we see we see it over here. All, all British guys talking about beer and smoking a pipe, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> It is, it is a past. Yeah. I always enjoy a good cigar. I haven't gotten to the pipe smoking yet, but I do enjoy a good cigar sometimes with the beer. <laughs> so what what do you think of the the, beer, the bar scene now? Um, um, what's it what, like? What's it like where you live? Um, has it changed over the years? Um, For the bar scene? Yeah, the people still generally go out on a Saturday, Sunday night. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, mean I'm a, I guess you could say I'm an old married man now. So, But yeah, occasionally... <laughs> You know, I go out like we go out like after work sometimes, like for happy hour and stuff like that. And you're still seeing some bar scenes. It's definitely a lot of competition where I'm at here in Cincinnati. Um, I where where we're located, like I said, we have like 60 different breweries through the area, so we see a lot of the breweries getting a lot of the population of people, excuse me, of people coming in to drink. But the local bars, they all have their little groups that come in. But what you also see is like say some of the millennials who are drinking still some craft beer, but you're seeing, I would say out of like four, you're probably seeing two to three out of four, probably drinking more of a mixed cocktail. Okay. So you're seeing some of that happen. So you're not seeing them not just going to craft beer or beer, just like not in beer in general. Some of them are just going right to the mixed drinks. And that's caused what we're now seeing, like the, uh, the craft beer cocktail explosion, right? So you're getting drinks now that are being made with a mix of beer and liquor in there. And I think that's kind of the driving thing with the millennials because they're not fully some of them into the beer taste. They like that mixed drink, but they're being introduced to it through different ways by doing the uh, cocktails with it. So, Okay. Yeah. Um, and do, what's your opinion on the, um, the, the beer rating sites? Um, um, <laughs> well, I did a video a while back um, on my opinion about beer ratings because it essentially – they're all just opinions. They're opinion of the person. And what I, I sometimes have an issue with beer ratings because if someone says, okay, and I rate this beer a B plus, you have no idea why they rated a B plus possibly. Um, now I actually started going back and doing ratings on my site because people were asking on my channel, like about ratings. So I created my own system where I actually rate out based on, you know, I, I have a scale of a hundred point scale. So I do, I'll wait 15 points each to appearance, the aroma, the flavor and the palate, and then 40 points on how it does overall. And that gives me the total score at the end. So people can kind of see that and people have liked it because they said that's more transparent to see why I would rate something. I just basically rate out how I feel on that scale, add the numbers together, and that gives me the thing there. The rating sites, depending on which one it is, people are in there pretty much giving their own personal taste, but some people go with a bias, right? So if you go on to like rate beer, you'll see sometimes in there, like say Budweiser and Budweiser will get slammed because it's like a macro beer by a lot of people. But you look at it, you say this beer is way better than being like a 15 or something, you know, a low score. <laughs> so people are just slamming it because of it being a macro. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of wait that out there. I don't usually use the sites anymore. I used to go to rate beer. I used to go to beer advocate. Um, the only one I really go on is untapped and that's usually for my personal preference. So I can just keep track of my beers and then I put my rating in based off my new rating uh, criteria that I use. And I have a lot of friends there. And we can see how other of us are looking at it and stuff, too. So yeah. you just got to take it with a grain of salt when you're looking at somebody's ratings. And uh, if you get somebody that said, well, this beer is disgusting. And they rate it like a, a two or whatever. Like, well, why is it disgusting? What do you not like about that beer? You know, tell yes. people something that's going to be helpful to pick it out. Like, I just did the the Sriracha Stout from Rogue. And that's a beer you're going to kind of be either you're going to love it or hate it most likely. But I try to give reasons of what I found out of it, why it worked for me and all that kind of stuff. So it's not just like, 
you know, this is a good beer. I don't know why people hate it. And that's the end of the review. So. <laughs> well, it's, well, it's good for um, keeping a list of the beers you drank, I think. Yeah. No. Um, so what, what is your poison? What's your favorite beer? What, what do you like? Go back to again and again. Well, I think it's always tough when you say the favorite beer, right? Because there's so many different styles, <laughs> so many different beers. I would say one of the, the best beers I've had that I really enjoyed that over the years has always been kind of a soft spot against Ain't the Heart. It's probably been the Golden Drop, uh, uh, was it 9,000, I believe. And that's when I like, I, I'm, I'm Belgian ales are probably my top style that I prefer. So that Golden Drop 9,000 is one that kind of sits up there. There's some local ones that do like some of the local IPAs, for instance, when they come out or Imperial Stouts. I say, okay, I want to get that one. That's really good. You know, here we have a local uh, place called Mad Tree. Uh, they just came out with their Axis Monday, which is a great beer. Um, so it's it's always an ever changing thing. We have six thousand breweries in the U.S., so your favorites are almost changing like weekly. It seems. Yeah. I mean, every week I get an email update about a new beer being released by one of the breweries here, and it's like, geez, you can't even keep up to speed on all of these. So, but I would say probably the uh, the Golden Drop Nine Thousand, probably the one that stands out the most to me. It was just one of those beers that hit me well. Every time I've had, it's always solid. It's always consistent, and it's got kind of a a classic taste with it and you get to drink out of a chalice so (laughs) (laughs) Uh, are you are you are you you particular with the way you drink like from a particular glass or i get a a boot boot or a shoe (laughs) (laughs) it's i usually i like to try to match up the styles to the proper glassware when i drink them now if you're out and about sometimes you don't have that option they serve they serve stuff and what they serve it in. And like some places here in the U S I'm not sure if it's over there as well. They use a lot of the shaker pint glasses here. And I'm not a fan of those shaker pint glasses, which really shouldn't be used for beer glasses in my opinion. But um, I usually try to match up. There are certain qualities that go with certain glasses that, you know, if you have that high ABV type beer, there's a reason you have it like in a snifter type glass because it holds in aroma is a little bit better. You really sit there and enjoy it. Mm-hmm. It's not a beer you're going to chug, so you want to maximize what gets held on in the mm-hmm. beer itself, and that allows it to do that. If you're drinking like a Pilsner or whatever, yeah, you could put it in a shaker pint or something like that because you're not going to really be in it as much for the aroma as much as the taste because you're going to drink it pretty quickly anyway because you want to drink it with that nice cold feel to it. So. All of that kind of stuff comes into play. I try to match it up. I'm behind me. I don't know if you can see it, but I keep like a glass collection up on the bookcase back there. But um, usually those are just for show. I don't really use them. I got glasses downstairs I actually use because these are like all different ones from breweries and things like that that I kind of kept and collected over the years. So, Well, if you like Bel- Belgians, I mean, most Belgians, they're matched up, aren't they, with specific um, glasses, etc. cetera. Yeah. Um, so what's exciting you in in the world of beer at the moment? Is there any anything in the because you said you do your news 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 weeklies or whatever? Is there anything in the world at the moment that's? I would say the things that have kind of caught my eye has have been some of the um, changes taking places with some of the breweries, the smaller breweries. There are some that are now closing their doors because uh, they can't keep up or make sales for what they need to make. Um, in the past, we've seen a lot of like AB a, and Bev or Coors Miller um, or, um, you know, Constellation buy some of these smaller companies. But what's interesting, what I'm seeing now is some of the the bigger craft breweries buying some of the smaller craft breweries, which I think is pretty cool because then they're keeping it still kind of in that craft type label. So they're not really going to have to go to the mass producing type company. So that'll be interesting to keep an eye on there as well. We've had some mergers over here like for instance last year southern tier got together with victory brewing and another brewery to make their own little conglomerate together so keeping an eye on that kind of stuff's been interesting some of the new styles and new flavors they're messing with there there's been like a big push over probably the last year and a half with some of our beers that have like hoppy hoppy uh lagers so they're putting more hops and lagers to give them more of a bitterness to them than how they used to be so some people are enjoying those some are, it's kind of been a mixed bag, but I'm kind of interested to see how that plays out. And then, like I said, the expansion is crazy. Um, 6,000 breweries in the U.S., and I think it was like back in 1983 or 84, 
we only had like over four, just over 40. So you think about all the numbers that have just grown and you're always trying different things. And it's just the excitement. It's like a golden era of beer. So it's just an exciting thing to walk into any brewery. You might find something different. It's awesome. Okay. And what about yourself? Have you ever tried uh, home brewing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've actually, I've, I've brewed in the past. Um, I, I brewed smaller batch, like two and a half gallons, and I've tried different things. And I've brewed uh, beers using uh, serrano peppers and raspberries and uh, I made like a peanut butter uh, porter one year and did, just did some different things. It's fun. If you like to cook, you probably would like home brewing if you like beer because, I mean, that's really what you're doing is experimenting with different things. So it's a blast. It's a good time. It's, it gets a little crazy in the kitchen if you're doing it in the kitchen. That's why a lot of guys move to the garage later on. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah, it's a fun time for sure. And um, what about the, the the rest of the year, the future, 2018? Um have you any exciting plans um, for what for in the beer industry or for what's for your, coming for your blog or for your vlog? I know I know you're doing t-shirts now, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I've I've done the t-shirts. Um, which got one here. Um, I started messing around with like some merchandise and stuff. Cause I got an online store out there, and I was looking into because it was colder over here a while back, and I was looking at maybe doing hoodies, but I didn't end up doing them. Um, yeah, I look at stuff. I put it out there in case people do want to take a look at getting anything. And I've had a few people that did want to get the T-shirts. Um, I think it's more just trying to keep that brand awareness still going. So trying to do different things with the channel, kind of figuring out, you know, the whole YouTube thing. You know, they're kind of changing their stuff up now, of course. And I think a lot of people are upset by how YouTube is changing. You got to have a certain amount of followers and people that watch a certain amount of time. So It'll be interesting to have that plays out. Some guys are talking about maybe trying to do stuff on Twitch or some of these other sites, but we'll see what happens. I mean, I started out doing this for fun, so it's kind of still doing that and everything. I'm getting exposure, and I went to the last uh, beer fest we had a few weeks ago, met more breweries that are, that are putting me on for different things to try to help them out. So I'm just looking forward to just get out there and talking more about beer and seeing what people like to have. I've Thought of, I have other certain ideas I'm thinking about bringing to the channel, but I haven't done them yet. But just I'm trying to mix it up and keep it fresh for everybody just because I don't want it to get like everybody's just get so predictable. Right. You always want to have people like wanting to check out, see what else is going on. So I just keep trying these different ideas and see what people like. OK, that's great. And um, just um, where can people find you then on Facebook and Instagram? Is it the same as your YouTube channel? Is, is Rod J ventures is it yeah if 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 you google um rajbeerventures.com that takes you to the blog and then on the right side it has a list of all the sites but anywhere except twitter it's rajbeerventures.com you can put it in there and you'll find it easily with twitter there's no s on the back end because it was one character too long so it's just rajbeerventure so a lot of people find me there on twitter for that but if on instagram or on um Google Plus or Facebook or Twitter, um, all those places, Tumblr, you know, you can find me by Rajay Beer Ventures for the most part. Okay, and if I can find them, I'll put the links down below if I yeah. <laughs> find them out. Um, yes, that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks, Rod. Um, pleasure to talk to you, and thanks for introducing yourself and your uh, blog. Um, and um, maybe we'll chat some other time in the future. Yeah, so definitely, and thanks for having me on. So. I appreciate it.